Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Galatians chapter 2. God is going to speak to someone now from verse 1 and 2. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord. Price number three, the price of greater enlightenment. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. Then 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus also with me. I love verse 2. It says, and I went up by revelation. I didn't go up by suggestion. I didn't go up by what? I went up by revelation. Of course, it has its literal meaning there to explain what he was doing. But that, that is a prophetic expression there. I went up. In this kingdom, we go up by revelation. I went up by revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. It has become an anthem in this house. 8 and verse 2, 1 Corinthians. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The price of greater enlightenment. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24 and 25. Acts 18. Remember a popular story? The Bible says a certain Jew named Apollos, he was born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scriptures. The Bible says he came to Ephesus. And then the man was instructed in the way of the Lord being fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john let's read 26 the bible says one time he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly the price of greater enlightenment listen if you want to rise higher in life you must contend for greater levels of enlightenment and i broke this enlightenment into two number one the first dimension of greater enlightenment you must contend for they are called the mysteries of the kingdom please write the first dimension of enlightenment you must contend for you must contend for higher and superior levels of the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 11, for it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom we discussed this already knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof on earth so that's the first dimension of the greater enlightenment. You must know the mysteries of the kingdom. What are they? The spiritual secrets by which dominion is activated through. It's important for you to know that. Dominion does not just happen. Authority is not only, is, it doesn't just work arbitrarily. It is on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we command dominion in this earth. But the second dimension, not many believers have paid attention to it. It's called the law of life and the law of human nature. The law of life and human nature. Listen, there are superior levels of greatness and there are dimensions in this kingdom and in the cosmos that if you do not understand the laws of life and the laws that govern human nature, you can call them the laws of the cosmos. There are laws that operate in this earth failure to know them you will get into all kinds of trouble when you are dealing with the mysteries of the kingdom you will learn the laws of prayer and priesthood is that true 
you will learn the law of giving you will learn the law of meditation and speaking and all of those things but as wonderful as that is you must be able to complement it with the intelligence of the laws of the cosmos most people do not know this let me show you three scriptures luke chapter 16 and verse 8 hear what jesus said luke 16 and verse 8 if god is blessing you say amen, amen. he gave a parable of the unjust steward and here was the conclusion of that parable the lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation he said wiser than the children of light he acknowledged that they were the children of this world under the influence of the cosmos but he says they are wiser than the children of light do you know that jesus began his teaching look up please notice the structure of jesus's teaching he began his teaching with what we call the Beatitudes. Are we together? Blessed are these, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then eventually, he switched into teaching them the cosmos, the world system. He taught them, he now began to give them enlightenment on how to live effectively in the cosmos. Matthew chapter 10, please. He began his teaching in Matthew chapter 5, teaching them on prayer, teaching them on several things, you know, righteousness and all of that. By the time we get to chapter 10 from verse 16, hear what he said. Jesus now, giving us the wisdom of living and excelling in the cosmos. He said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. One of the few times in the Bible where Jesus will recommend understudying the serpent. The serpent has always typified Satan, evil, and disaster. But when it has to do with the intelligence, please keep that scripture, of excelling in this cosmos, he says, make sure you learn the wisdom of the serpent and yet be as harmless as doves. 17. Give us 17. It says, but beware of men. That is already a very strong instruction he's telling you. Beware. There is something about the human nature in the world that you are living in. Don't just be a prayer warrior, a fasting giant, a revelation giant, and then don't sustain wisdom. Please look at me. Let me teach you this. My precious people, hear me. Many believers are completely ignorant as far as the intelligence of dealing with the cosmos is concerned. And it has cost us many things beyond our imagination. There are laws of human nature. There are laws that you must know. It is true. For instance, I've taught you one of them, the law of seasons. Is that true? that no season remains consistent seasons change it is a law that operates while the earth remaineth. is it not in your bible seed time and harvest you will never have seed time alone you will never have harvest alone you must know how to take advantage of seasons when you see the rainy season for us in nigeria here i told you remember the law of seasons every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season i am coming and every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season i am coming if you enjoy the season and don't collect the letter and read it you will be in trouble every time you see evil it is because there is good it's called the law of polarity every time you see darkness is because there is light male female god himself designed that law I'm not talking about some, some Scientology and some demonic thing. I'm talking of the wisdom of the cosmos. Jesus here is telling you, understudy the serpent. There are men who have taken advantage of that season. Even animals and ants that don't have conferences, they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't pray in tongues, but they have taken advantage of the laws of the earth. And with it, they have animals have never experienced ants that we know. We, we have not seen them gang up together to say there is famine because there are laws that they operate. They don't have an advantage we, as far as we know. We know they praise God because the Bible says everything that has breath, let it praise the Lord. But we don't know about prayer. Are we together? Human beings are the only species that are so disoriented. 
The animals are to the Bible to the point that the Bible says, Oh sluggard, go to the ant and learn that they do not have a king. In other words, there is problem with structure, and yet in it they still excel. The wisdom of the cosmos. There are many natural laws that govern our world. Gravity is not just a spiritual law, it is also a natural law. It is because of the awareness of it today. We have come into that awareness and we have built things around it to our advantage. There are many things you have to know about life and the nature of men. Is, is, is someone learning now? I wrote here, for instance, you have to understand the principles of cause and effect. It will guide you. In addition to the fear of the Lord that you have, if you understand that there are consequences for every action, it will tame the things that you do. There is the law of seasons, the awareness of the selfish nature of men. You can pray in tongues, you can fast, have spiritual understanding, and then in addition, when you now go to the work, the place of work or your place of business, there is an awareness that all human beings are not like those in your house. You know, most believers have been shielded from the reality of how life truly is. They are used to innocent people. They are used to, you can keep your money in your house and come and see someone package it for you and say with love from your brother. And some of us believe that the whole world is like that. Are we together? You can be fasting and someone will cook for you and say this is to sow into your life and then for many especially christian families the moment their children have the honor you don't have to be evil to be exposed to the laws of life unfortunately when you are exposing people and teaching them the wisdom of the cosmos they will say it's not necessary after all i have god i'm going to show you something that will bless you is god blessing you already so many christian young people especially are very naive as to the realities of the cosmos as soon as they come out and they are no longer under the influence of parents or guidance or church maybe they relocate out of nigeria or they now get jobs or they get married or something happens that exposes them to the world they spend about the first 10 years of their lives paying the price of ignorance spiritually alive but very dead in terms of the wisdom of the cosmos so someone can come and say you know what i'm a nice person I love you very much. How much do you have? You say, I have one million. My father gave me and said, he has settled me. He said, just bring it. I'm a very faithful person. And they naively bring it because they say, no, it has to be God because this is how favor works. Most people do not understand the wisdom of the cosmos. That the heart of man is desperately wicked. That is a powerful information you should store as you explore this adventure of life. It's not to make you suspicious. It now creates a prayer request. Lord, send good people to my life. Send destiny helpers to my life because of the awareness of that law. Are we together? So the moment you hear that, ah, the earth is going to fold up, you just know that based on the law of seasons, the thing that is, is the thing that was and the thing that will be thereafter. You will find rest. The only person who will close the earth is the one who opened it. There is, no, there is nothing that will happen on earth that is enough to fold the earth like a cotton. God will close the earth intentionally. It's not disaster that will close the earth. So no matter how bad what happens, you know, economically, politically, there will always be a way out. It, we are not the first. There have been dark ages in history. Is that true? There has been famine in history. Is that true? But there also has been abundance. Is that true? Just the knowledge of the law of seasons will give you the staying power through the storms in your life. So for this season, I do not have a job. This season, it looks like things are not working. But I understand, number one, the integrity of God. But even within the cosmos, I know that everything is transient. So rather than regretting over current seasons, I begin to prepare and program the seasons coming. Is someone getting blessed? So man of God, while you are looking at 10 members and saying, God, you can't do this to me. Not after all my days of fasting, you should know that the way God works, he works by the law of seasons. There is the law of time and chance. There is the law of process. The knowledge of these laws prepare you immediately. If you hold 20,000, that is not all you will hold. He's only training your hands to hold it well. Is God helping us? 
believers are very ignorant let me show you something in acts chapter 7 and verse 22 there are two personalities in the bible who have really really surprised me number one is called moses number two is called abraham i have studied their lives carefully are we together now because of the way they walk with god and i found out that for every one of them look at moses i want to show you something that will surprise you how many of you know that moses's assignment was a purely spiritual assignment it was the assignment of a deliverer if moses was in the new testament we'll call him an apostle and yet look at the nature of his training the bible says god sent him to egypt and he learned he was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds why did god subject him to go and learn the wisdom of egypt whereas his assignment was just to bring people out and to take them into the promised land is that in your bible give us genesis 12 ah, i love preaching give us genesis 12 let me let me just drum this thing in my give please give us genesis 12. may god bless you thank you genesis 12 watch this now so god is asking god is asking abraham to leave um his father's house and all of that to a land that he would show him is that true now let me show you something very powerful give us from verse um i'm trying to look for let's go to verse verse 10 genesis 12 verse 10 please be patient while i read now remember abraham had had an encounter with god and god said leave to the place of destiny i will do this for you you will become a father of this and that the bible now said there was famine in the land have you noticed that every time there is hunger and famine where do they go to this is true for abraham this was true for joseph this was true for moses egypt is an antichrist place they do not understand kingdom in terms of kingdom come but they understand the wisdom of the cosmos and whenever god is training his people among the many things he does is he sends them to egypt and say learn something from egypt the symbol of egypt is it not the serpent please talk to me so when he says be as wise as the serpent he's not just saying copy the snake he's saying there is a wisdom that comes with the cosmos give us that scripture please let's just walk it a bit have I lost you, media? And there was famine in the land. And Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous. Now, this was a man who had spoken with God. You will think after an encounter with God, he should never feel the famine in the land. Your encounter, your altar of prayer, your altar of worship, it may still be rich. And you will be surprised. You will feel the effect of the happenings around the cosmos. Are we learning now? 11 it came to pass when he was come near into egypt look at are you seeing the pressure of egypt made him to start telling lies he never told lies when it was his relationship with god but as soon as he got into the system the effect of ignorance on how to operate in the system started producing in him like a man of god will start well not intending to bribe not intending to do witchcraft but as soon as hunger comes he can arrange a conference to raise money he said to sarai his wife behold now i know that thou art a fair woman to look upon uh -huh. next verse please let's hurry up media therefore it shall come to pass when the egyptians shall see thee they shall say this is your wife and they shall kill me but you they will save you you see all these attributes finding expression say i pray you that you are my sister that it may be well with me for your sake and that i will leave did he have to go there if you are going to tell that level of lie to go there why don't you just go down you go back and hunger will kill you but you have to compromise and go into Egypt. Are you seeing now? The price for going into Egypt is that you must be prepared for compromise. But if you withdraw, you may keep whatever and hunger will kill you and you will die. Look at the dilemma that this man is in now. Is someone getting blessed? 15. Let's finish up. 
let me read it here this these people if i walk with them we're going to be late the king's officials told him about her and she was taken to his house the bible says the king was good to abram because of sarah and abram was given sheep look at the gifts that he was given are you seeing where he got his wealth from where did he get it from in egypt his spirituality was powerful but his wealth and dominion came when he went to egypt he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had given him sheep, oxen, and asses, and men servant, and she asses, and camels, and all of that. Let's read down. It says, The Lord now plagued Pharaoh. Are you seeing that now? Everybody look at this. This is powerful. My God. Now, he goes to meet the king in Egypt, Abimelech. Is that true? And Abimelech says, there is something I'm looking for, but I understand that one of the laws of life is the law of exchange. I will have to entreat your favor. This is what I have. Something must leave me for something from you to come. Are you seeing now? The wisdom of Egypt. He didn't sit down and wish the woman like many of us would do. He said, no, I know that I have to give you something that is valuable that you need. That the table of destiny is the table of negotiation. It's not just a table of wishes. World leaders know this. So he says, let me give you gifts. I see that you are not very wealthy. I am wealthy. I need this woman you've told me as your sister. It took God to intervene. God had to say, yes. He started plaguing him because of Abraham's wife. Now that is the power of a relationship with God. After you have a relationship with God, when you go to the cosmos and Satan wants to take an advantage of you, the God who you have a covenant with will now speak for you like he's speaking. But already, notice, already the gift has been given and there's no record of him collecting it back. 18. Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that thou hast done to me? Thou did not tell me that she was your wife. 19. He says, why sayest thou that she's my sister? I may have taken her to wife now. Behold, take your wife and go, but not alone. Go with all the gifts that I brought to you. Are we together now? Go with everything. Verse, verse 20 says that Pharaoh commanded the men concerning him. They sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Now give us 13 verse 1. It will make a lot of sense to you now. Abraham went out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south are we together so tell me please why did god send him to egypt from this story you read it what what did he really do in egypt there was something he needed for his destiny but it was found in egypt he went out of egypt Verse 2, Abraham was very rich in cattle. Uh -huh. Next time you read it, you know where it came from now. He was rich in silver. He was rich in gold. Let's stop there. Don't be afraid when God sends you to learn the wisdom of Egypt. You don't have to be compromised. It is the wisdom of the serpent you can learn. And still have the dignity of kingdom integrity why because your relationship with God is still intact so he says you are a sheep in the midst of wolves you don't run away you have to wear the regalia of wolves to look like one but you know by heart that you are a sheep so you will register the company like other companies you will go for the board meetings too with secular people and antichrist people. You don't run away waiting for only believers to teach you secular knowledge. You will go to a university with hedonistic people. And while they are teaching, you still have the conviction of heaven. Are we together now? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's very important for you to understand this. The price of greater enlightenment. I've had the honor and the privilege of learning the wisdom of leadership and even administration. And it is not all the teachings. I have a system of verifying and editing everything I learn. Albeit my heart is open to receive wisdom from people. They tell you someone is a professor in Harvard 
and Oxford and Yale, it will be stupid of you to think they don't know what they are saying. They may not understand spiritual things, but as far as the matters of Egypt is concerned, they have something you need. This is where the pride of Christians come. We hold our Bible and we say yes, but the truth is that some of us cannot interpret what is written there until we take advantage of the wisdom of Egypt. You, do, you are not allowed to copy the lifestyle of Egypt, nor to bow to the gods of Egypt, but you can extract their wisdom. Are we learning? So for some of you here, in addition to your prayer, in addition to your fasting, in addition to what God has done, you may need to go online and learn about administration and leadership. A 30 minutes video on proper administration can turn your ministry to a new dimension. The problem with the ministry is not spirituality. You are doing well, but you do not know how to multiply and preserve things. There are ministries that their problem is financial management because the truth is they do not have the wisdom and the intelligence for proper planning. It's not that God is not faithful, but there is no system. And this is even true for nations. No wonder many unbelieving nations seem to have economic stability and have it they do they may not honor the god of heaven but my goodness you see the dexterity you see organization in those nations we can humble ourselves and learn when it has to do with the wisdom of the cosmos it is not unscriptural to learn albeit you submit it to the wisdom of the world and edit the part of it that directly does not promote kingdom come but there is a part of it that is important look unto abraham your father and to sarah that birdie if you ever find out how Abraham was rich, he was sent to Egypt. The Bible says, talking about Moses, now give us that scripture, Acts chapter 7 and 22. It says that Moses was sent and he learned, he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. God himself allowed him. I hope you know Moses was in ministry. Moses was not like Daniel who was in politics. Do you know when Daniel went, I wish we had time, would have dealt with the story of Daniel. When Daniel went to Egypt, it's in your Bible. In Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says when they went there as slaves, Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat, not the king's knowledge. It was the king's meat he refused because it was given to idols. But he was taught the ways of the Babylonians. It's in your Bible. It was the king's meat he rejected because this one was offered directly to idols. But the wisdom of the Babylonians, he had it. And after 10 days, they tested him. He said he was 10 times better. Is it in your Bible? Could it be that there are many, many things in addition, not in defiance to spiritual laws, we must incorporate guided by the word of God and structured mentorship. There are laws of life. There are realities about the human nature that we must know and understand. Otherwise, failure will be imminent for many people. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. So if Jesus says the children of this world are wiser than us, it means there is something we must learn. For God to use Moses, he sent Moses to Egypt. Moses spent a major part of his life under tutors and governors that were largely antichrist. Abraham was sent in Egypt and he came back and got wisdom and he was able to use it. Joseph, the same thing happened to Joseph. When Joseph went to Egypt, Joseph did not just go to Egypt and sat there. There were things he knew and learned, all for his enthronement. What of Jesus? Jesus came to abolish the law, but when he came, the first thing he did was to go to the temple. The same scribes and Pharisees who Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, yet he submitted to them and he learned. The, it is written that he used to defeat Satan was learned in the temple. Are we together? Even though he was the word of God, 
Are you seeing the pattern there? The same thing happened with Paul. Paul who would later be used by God as a scribe and a Pharisee. He submitted himself to learn he was the doctor of the law. And then when he had an encounter, he did not waste it. There was a time where it was not prayer that saved him. He said, hey, I'm a Pharisee. Don't kill me. He had to use the wisdom. He had to use that wisdom. He said, ah, I'm a Pharisee. I have a right to be alive. Can I tell you, there are many roads that you will need in your journey to destiny. There are times where you will have to use the advantage of the wisdom of the cosmos. He said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. That is the basis of your security. There are angels, but as far as per your sustenance in this city, find rest. The, it is the, the numbers that will become your security. He said, in the multitude of men is the king's honor. This is the wisdom of the cosmos. Most believers do not know and appreciate the power of influence, for instance. We reject it as though it is antichrist. It can be antichrist if not managed. And we have ignored influence to our detriment. If God is giving us wisdom, say amen. amen. Let's hurry up. Hmm. Price number four. What is the fourth price for higher dimensions greater dimensions the price of greater contribution slash productivity the price you want to be great and you want to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and in life and destiny especially the fourth price is the price of greater contribution the price of productivity Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. It says the gift of a man or a man's gift make it room for him and bring it him. Someone say bring it him. The gift does not only make room. It can transport you from one realm to the other. One realm of possibility to the other. It bring it him before great men. There's no way for him to get to the place of great men. But his gift would bring him before great men hallelujah this is very very important in daniel chapter 5 let's read verse 10 let's look at how the lord exalted daniel in daniel chapter 5 now a little background when you read from verse 1 don't turn there let me just the bible talks about the son of nebuchadnezzar belshazzar is that true and the bible says they had stolen vessels from the house of God and they were making merry and you know giving the credit to the God of the Babylonians and all of that suddenly a hand pierces through their place there and writes on the wall mene mene tekel ufesin. and the king was disturbed the Bible says he shook his legs were shaking and he called on all the astrologers and the sorcerers to come and help interpret and sadly they could not and he was downcast are we together? Verse 10 now. You will understand it from there. The Bible says the queen, his wife now, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor thy countenance be changed. Verse 6. But next verse. It says, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods is. And in the days of thy father's light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the God was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father said, made master over the magicians. Look at the role they gave him. He was master over what? <laughs> and, and, and. This is the position he occupied in Egypt. Verse, verse 12 for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences look at solutions dissolving of doubt were found in the same which same Daniel the same Daniel that proposed that he will not defy himself with the king's meat the same Daniel that called upon the Lord strong priesthood but he was Daniel with this plethora of abilities and solutions showing of hard sentences dissolving of doubts were all found in the same person he said let him be called 
and he will show the interpretation next verse then was daniel brought in before the king and the king spake unto daniel art thou daniel art thou the children of the captivity of judah whom the king my father brought out of jewelry and 14 he said yes and he said i have heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee remember this was a hedonistic king testifying over daniel 15. we're reading to 17. and now the wise men the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read the writings and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of the things 16. It says, I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Why was he called into the palace? The solution, the extent of the solution he could provide. His level of productivity was so much. The king didn't want to bring him, but the wife advised him and said, if it's to solve this, your problem, there is only one man. The same thing happened to Joseph. Are you seeing the patterns now? Now, if thou can read the writing, and make known unto me the interpretation what will be the reward thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and thou shalt be the third ruler of the kingdom instant promotion the potential for promotion but i love daniel daniel answered and said let thy gifts be to thyself a man who is not blessed will not speak like this he says and give your rewards to another yet because I know that dominion is a product of solutions. I will read the writings unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. There is confidence that competence brings. There is a level of confidence. If you are competent, I can tell you this. There is a level of confidence, not pride. Daniel the Great. Look at what the king was willing to offer him just for interpreting this i will make you the third in the kingdom now when you read this you will see i i don't have the time for us to read but daniel now told him something that we'll consider in maybe the next point he said listen your father died because of pride you too you are going to die because of pride the bible said that same night he was slain are we together let's read six verse one daniel seal daniel don't be tired of scripture it gives us wisdom it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Verse 2. He said, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was what? First. Of whom Daniel was first. So even though he did not collect the gifts, of Belshazzar when Darius became king he lifted him no wonder when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were suffering it was minus him I hope you know that listen believers we must get to a point where we place value on productivity if we do not place value on productivity it is going to affect us it is affecting africa it is affecting even the church in nigeria the bible already says we are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth in addition to our priesthood we must understand the power of superior contributions and productivity let me tell you something your productivity can bring you to a position in one day where you will salvage the destinies of men and bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord the nation of Israel were, were preserved because Daniel through value rose to the position where he was second in command and under his watch God's people were preserved until there rose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph are we together may God forbid it that a time will come in this nation because of lack of productivity they will shut down and clamp down Christian activities because of one policy and there will be nobody to speak. Can I tell you, we can be effective priests, but if our contribution is not superior to go beyond religion, beyond race, beyond the local environment, we are going to remain small. This is an apostolic message. Nations are built with a combination of priesthood and superior contribution. Not priesthood alone, superior contribution. 
Aleluya. So that we do not get to a point where, respectfully speaking, look at what has happened to our nation and many nations in Africa. Anything happens, we become the victims of it. Whether it is policies, migration policies, whatever it is, because the truth is, with respect to the global table, our contribution may be significant within a place, but it's not, people depend on the facts and the figures. The figures don't lie. If you contribute seriously, as far as the table of nations is concerned, there are certain statements that will not be made to you. Is that true? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching